G'day ladies and gentlemen, my name is Bobloon aka Pabloon and today it's going to be a bit of a negative video. This is a video where I will address many of the reasons why I think Blitz has kind of failed me. It sounds very dramatic, it's it's kind of supposed to be sounding dramatic because it, it, you know it kind of saddens me that I have to make this video, but nonetheless I feel like it's very important and I also think I'm not the only one who feels this way. It's a very long video guys, so get something to drink or maybe snack on. And uh, if you are watching, there will be gameplay as you can see. Just some average gameplay, there are some bangers in between. But for those of you guys who don't care about watching the gameplay, this can also just be listened to. So let me first start off by talking about how I started in Blitz. And the reason I played this game for so long and started a channel with it. So back in 2000, end of 2018, I just joined the Navy and I was not home quite a lot of the time. I was pretty much at, you know, stationed at my ship or the Navy base and I didn't have my computer. I've been a PC player my whole life. I've been gracious enough to have a computer to play on. So mobile games have never really been my thing. But I had discovered this game and I thought, you know, why not give it a shot? I am, I have time to play right now. And subsequently, I fell in love with this game. It, I don't know what it was, but I've always loved ships, obviously, since I joined the Navy. And I had never played a game with ships. I never found a game that was actually fun and arcadey and didn't, you know, suck 40 minutes or two hours of my time. I think most naval games that I've seen have been pretty strategic and slow. So this really piqued my interest because it was kind of like a modern FPS shooter because that's what I've played a lot of in my life. So I ended up playing, joined a number of fleets. Well, I started out mostly in Corsairs. I went through the, the ladder A2R, A1R. These are the sister fleets, recruitment fleets. And then I joined the, the main fleet. Ended up getting two best player titles and did most of that solo. Of course, playing with my fleet mates because I made so many great friends while playing this game. That is also one of the other options why I fell in love with this game. This community is something I've never experienced, and I've said this many times. It's just the most close-knit, tight community that I've ever played with, and I've played a, quite a few toxic games. The, the only other one that comes to mind to me is World of Warcraft, and if you played World of Warcraft, you kind of know that it's also very tight-knit. But there was just something about this, and I think it kept me going. I then realized I could play on PC, with the with an sorry an emulator this is a blue stacks i'm using right now and this propelled me to really just enjoy the game even more because now i could play on my preferred platform the gameplay in blitz is also interesting i think it's a combination of like i said arcadey shooter type you know you aim and fire that's it you have different weaponry but also the strategic importance of naval battles positioning pushing, defending, focus firing, all these things I fell in love with. So that's just to tell you guys, the reason I said all this is because I want to make you guys understand that I'm not doing this to hate on the game or wargaming. It's simply because I just am so passionate about this game, or I have been for many years. It's now 2024. So I would say I've played this game for five years. I've racked up 16,000 battles and sitting in a 67% win rate. Now that's not the best in the world, but it's something I'm proud of. So let me get into the, the, the structure of this video. We're going to be talking about some of the bugs, the bots, the monetization of this game. So that's crates and, and sonar sweeps and the lack of innovation. We're also going to be talking about something that's very personal to me and something that is my opinion. This section will be biased because it's going to be about CVs and the way that matchmaking works. Now, you don't have to agree with me, but I would love if you would listen anyways. I'm not going to bash on CV players. I know we do that in my streams a little bit, but I want every CV player out there to know you didn't decide to put this in the game. Wargaming did. So let's just get out that, that out the way. Nobody is going to bash CV players for just enjoying a class because it's also a fun class if you like that type of playstyle. But anyways, I've been blab blabbering. This has been a long intro. I'm very sorry for blabbering so long, but I want to talk about one of the main things that has just frustrated me over the years significantly actually and that's the bugs 
the the first bug that came to mind when I was writing this script was of course the turret bug, and they fixed that. But the reason I'm putting it here is because it took too long. The turret bug was, I think, active for like two or three years. I remember it first on the Worcester, and it just kept going on. So many more ships had it. It was even so bad on a pretty expensive premium Paulo Emilio that is also pretty bad. Where the torpedoes, you had three tubes, but you could never use one of them because it had to re-aim. So many ships were ruined by it, but they fixed it. And I hope Wargaming noticed how happy the community was. We were joyful, we were thankful, but it took too long. There are ghost shells, you know, where you shoot your target, and especially if you're playing a battleship, this sucks. You shoot your target, and you hit all shells, you see the impact, you see the explosion, but no, sh no hits are registered. There's, it doesn't say ricochet, it doesn't say half pen, no hit. No numbers. That is infuriating. We have weird glitches where people will, you know, be no clipping into islands. We have bots that just have this most strange navigation algorithm where they just will drive into you, so sail into you. We have stealth CV fighters where y you hear the enemy aircraft incoming, right? But you don't see any planes on the map, nor can you see any planes in front of you. And then we have probably one of the most annoying and weird ones. I just don't understand how this works. Lag torps. You can see on your screen that you're dodging the torpedo, but it actually doesn't register. Um, and then all of a sudden, boom, you take a hit and your rudder's dead. Very annoying. So that has something to do with, you know, hitboxes or latency. I'm not a developer, but, you know, it just, it ruins the gameplay. There's also, when you shoot your torpedo, and then you all of a sudden get a hit randomly, and you look at your torps, none of them have disappeared. And the last one, which I find super, super annoying. I think many players who played Destroyer and Cruiser will definitely agree with me here that there is a bug, or I don't know if it's a bug, but it's just maybe the design. But when your screen, your little yellow exclamation mark telling you you are detected, when that disappears, if you then look at your map for the next three to five seconds, I haven't counted precisely, your detection bloom, you know, the dotted line, it's still up, like you're, you know, detected. And then three to five seconds later, boom, it goes down. So that means what we've been told that is 20 seconds and then you're undetected is actually more like 23 to 25. It might not be a bug, but it's super annoying that it doesn't line up. It's bad game design in my... Now, I don't really have any suggestions for how to fix these bugs. But, like I said, I'm not a developer, but I would like to hear from, you know, somebody who is a developer. Maybe I know I have some people here who, who do stuff with computers <laughs> i'm definitely not that tech savvy but to me it just seems like these fixes should have been priority instead of other things now let's move on to the next thing that has really frustrated me over the years at least and that's the bots i know that bots are very important for a game like blitz that is kind of niche and not all players reach the high tiers and not all players play low tiers so there's gonna be b bots in a game right but when you're gonna implement, implement bots, you, it, it, they cannot be Tokyo Drifting, man. That's not cool. The Tokyo Drift the bots do is some of the most frustrating gameplay I've ever seen. Now granted, after five years of playing, you can actually account for it and still hit them while they're doing their crazy drift. But it's still in the, in the heat of battle when you're, you know, getting hit by multiple things and you have this random bot, you know, steaming towards you. And you shoot your torpedoes, and he just instantly turns. You can never predict that. With your guns, you have time to reload again and kind of catch them in a, a full turn, right? But it's still super annoying. It's just... You can only laugh it off, and... I don't know, it's, it's just because it's so weird and so unrealistic. And I know this game is not realistic, but it really breaks your... Your immersion, and you just feel like, okay, if he can do that, why can't I do that? So that's, that's just why. Why are the bots drifting like this? I know it's something with their navigation algorithm or whatever it's called. But it's it's, stu it's just stupid. I mean, I don't really have an argument for it. I, <laughs> I wish I had a better one. But I think people can agree that it's just... It shouldn't be here in 2024. Then we go on to the, the CV bots being used too much for filler. And this goes just for bots in general. But this is also kind of a personal opinion. I find it a little bit annoying that... Let's say I'm playing a Shimakaze, right? 
uh, I don't have Shimakaze, but if somebody was playing it at Shimakaze, they want to be stealthy, they want to get the cap, and then all of a sudden this random bot CV just sends one or two squadrons over, and now you're detected. Let me ask you this, why is there even a bot CV in, on t both teams? If nobody queued up for CV, why don't they just fill it up with a, you know, a battleship or a destroyer bot or any, you know, a cruiser, anything but a CV? These players will just be happy that they don't have to deal with a, a CV in general, and especially not a player. So why put in the bot CV? I mean, that's my personal opinion, but maybe some of you guys can see the point. So another thing is, you know, bot games, they inflate the stats of players significantly, and that's myself included. Everybody who has played this game for a number of years will have had many bot games. If you play late at night or early in the morning or just got unlucky that nobody was playing your tier, you will have gotten a bot game where you get massive damage. And of course, that's awesome. But in the long run, it just inflates everybody's stats. And it also ruins the Legend League, if you ask me, because people abuse this and... Trust me, I saw that when I was trying to grind for the rank 1 player title. Like, you really need to play a lot. And of course, a bot game where you can just farm trophies and damage is good. And of course, I also took part in this. It took me a number of years to realize that it was just something I didn't want to do. So of course, I've also done it. And I've done it unwillingly, sometimes willingly. But the CV anchor where you have a tier 9 CV and two tier 10s, you know... It just makes it so people don't really care about the Legend League because that's really all it takes and you, sh you do that for a month or you know maybe eight to ten hours a day and boom you're gonna get it so I think that's a very annoying aspect of this of it too the bots in general are just not fun especially if you care about playing in platoons and versus other platoons because you'll just go through bot game and bot game and bot game and it's just if you're an actually serious player who wants to improve at the game and enjoy playing their, you know, awesome new ship or the ship they love. They just don't want to play versus bots. At least that's what I would think. Uh, that's how I feel myself, especially when I'm like a dude who streams and tries to make videos. It, bot games are just also not fun. Of course, that's very personal to me. But yeah, I think somebody can relate out there that when you actually really care about this game, you want real battles. You want those awesome experiences and high damage numbers that mean something. You cannot get a world record damage number when there's a bot in the game. So my only suggestion to this is make a toggable option to opt out of bot games. When you're about to, you know, join a game, just in the, you know, the game mode selector, maybe have a little option, option, a check mark that says bots or no bots, right? And if you don't want bots, you're going to be accepting that queue times and the time you have to wait for a game is going to be longer. But you're going to be ensured that the game you play has actual players in it. To me, that just seems like a no-brainer, and, and I know a lot of people in the community have <laughs> asked, you know, asked about this, has talked about this. So it shouldn't come as a new big surprise to wargaming. That's something they, they could do, at least I would think. So that is the bots, and um, I don't think they're as annoying as what I'm about to talk about next here: um, crates and monetization. So. I will start up by saying right now, I have been a massive whale in this game. I spent, I haven't looked, but I think last time we checked on stream and I have not spent a lot since I started streaming. I think I had over 350,000, maybe even close to 400,000, somewhere in the, that range, gold spent in this game on my main account. That's a lot of money. And yes, that makes me a whale. It's okay to be a whale because in general, it actually helps the game grow. So that's why I think it's unfair to call whales <laughs> whales, but it is funny. I mean, I, I don't mind being called a whale, but you know what I mean. The point is, they're actually helping the game. It's a free game, so every, every anybody who spends money on the game, you know, helps it grow. But my problem comes in when we have gambling here that is without age restriction. The little kids could potentially go in and learn about these slot machines. I don't think that is good at all. Now, this is nothing new to the gaming industry at all. The, you know, if you've played Counter-Strike, Call of Duty, uh, Overwatch, FIFA, you name it, all of these had gambling creation. They, they probably still do. I know Counter-Strike does, but I remember one that removed them, Call of Duty, and they introduced a shop instead where you could just buy the skins and whatever you wanted outright. 
and I can tell you, I'm pretty sure that made them more money because the game's still going, even though the player base is kind of dropping out. They're still making money. My point being that if Wargaming decided to go away from crates and gambling and just outright sell a tier 10 premium maybe make some crazy bundles where you can get the historical camo and some you know some boosters what you name it they would make so much more money now i'm obviously not in business or finances and i have not run a company i'm just a 24 year old guy who decided to make videos on a mobile game that we all know means a lot more to us than the mobile game so i want to propose something to wargaming if you look at Call of Duty Modern Warfare 19, the game that came out in 2019, and see when they changed to the shop where you could just buy stuff. Imagine if you had done that in World of Warships, went from crates to bundles and just a straight up shop, you know, no, no funny business, an honest shop. It could be expensive, sure, but don't you think that the people that would never spend their money on gambling crates because, you know, not all people have so much that they can buy that i was a young lad i remember when i didn't have that so all i'm saying is if you had had bundles instead of crates i think these people they could have thought okay i'm gonna save up for this it might be hella expensive but i'm gonna save up for it now people all have different type of money we all know that so of course somebody has enough to buy these things but i think wargaming would make more money and they would service the fans more if they just made it a straight up shop where you can see okay this thing cost 150 dollars or whatever you know and i really want it okay it's it's in the shop it's not gonna go away and then they then they're gonna sell it now we can go and talk about limited time offers and all the bit business practices that makes you know players want to buy the fomo is huge but it it's weird to me that a lot of ships that came out three to four years ago that they're not appearing in shops we're not seeing them in bundles you know they could even just make a bundle for let's say the ragnar or the Gibraltar or Slava, make a bundle for it, people will buy it. So that was a little bit of a rant. Um, it is something that really frustrates me about this game because I just don't understand how they, they, they can't see it. I definitely think it kills off the player base. And I think a lot of veteran players have stopped playing because so many cool ships were introduced, but they just didn't want to gamble their money away. And I completely understand that. Just like I understand the people who don't care and, and feel like they, they're okay to do that because it's your own choice. And you shouldn't be shamed for just wanting something cool in a video game. I've been there, trust me. Now, the next point I have here is uh, a lack of innovation, basically. I talked a little bit about it earlier, but I definitely don't think Wargaming have spent their time innovating on this game. I think they've spent their time innovating on new ships and making new features and gimmicks for ships and the features and gimmicks i love thank you wargaming for introducing combat instructions as we see here or scouting plane or i'm even gonna gonna go out on a limb here and i think actually also the jet planes are a cool addition you really did well with that but what i'm talking about here is stuff like the sound update the sound update that came not too long ago was absolutely phenomenal and it completely revived the the interest i think pe people had in the game at then they were like okay i'm gonna go back and try this including myself i remember i was playing a ton of minecraft back then but this completely changed what i was playing i was playing blitz at the time and i think all the homies on the minecraft server were, were too so if we look at that how could they not have made maybe a and i don't know a graphics update where are the new voice actors for the for the different lines that we've gotten for nations? Where's the, the Dutch voice actor, you know? Where's the posh British voice actor? Why, why don't we have that? Um, it's just the mobile industry is improving every day. It really is. Like, I, I'm going to... Sorry, Wargaming, but it's just the truth. I'm going to talk about your probably biggest competitor now. It's not Modern Warships. It's War Thunder Mobile. And I'm playing their naval game right now. And I have to admit, it feels like old Blitz. I'm not trying to get, you know, the player base to go to another game. But what I'm saying is the game is improving the graphics. The graphics are amazing in that one. There's no bugs. There is literally no gambling shop. There is a time, there is one, right? But you can, everything you can buy with a bundle. The graphics are amazing. The sound design is amazing. Of course, yes, it's a new game. It was developed now. But I'm surprised we haven't, you know, just, we haven't heard anything about 
a possible PC version coming where you can get better graphics or maybe just, you know, a whole new engine. Because they always talk about the engine of the game being so old. Well, that, why don't you, you know, invest some of the money that people are buying for these, you know, crates and bundles, invest that in a new engine. This sounds very mean, but I'm speaking straight from the heart, man. I don't know why this isn't a priority. That's what scares me. Also, there's no new commander system. We've gotten secondary overload, scouting plane, combat instructions, new Soviet planes, stuff like that, yada, yada, yada. Where are the new commander systems? Our commander system is from 2018, guys. There's so many aspects of this game that you can't improve on just because you have a new ship. So... I sincerely think Wargaming should have implemented a new commander system when they implemented the Schlieffen line and the secondary overload skills. You know, I'm pretty sure that that line would have been a lot more fun if you had a commander that actually could spec into secondary skills. But I digress. All I'm saying is the lack of innovation has really killed it off for me. You know, I've been playing this game for years. I've been making videos i've been enthusiastic i've spent money on the game but wargaming have not done anything with that kind of money the community spends it doesn't seem like that to me now of course i don't know anything i i might be a cc but i can't really you know go into wargaming and say do this do that they they are their own company and they they do as they please as they should but so am i going to do as a cc because i believe as a community contributor i need to help the game game grow and right now the game feels dead the game feels dead my friends now i want to talk about the wargaming staff that i have met or not met we have discussed on discord and i want to praise them for being an amazing staff of community staff they are really trying their hardest and when i'm talking about wargaming i, I really want to you know ensure that you guys are not included um Bella and Valk specifically, they are very passionate and they do their very best, but I don't know know what's going on at the upper echelons of Wargaming, but I just know that the people we are working with are amazing, and that is also why I think some of the other creators are still making videos, but we're just, you know, maybe doing other things, you know, playing other games, and that is just the that's just how it's going to work, you know, people have burnout, and I will talk about that in the later stages of this video. The last point I want to raise here, and that is going to be the biased one, and this is definitely my own opinion, and it's about the CVs. So, the first thing I'm going to say, and this is like my main argument for CV talk, if you have watched any of Wargaming's old World of Warships ads or sponsorships videos, they used to say, the thinking man's action game and i definitely think that applied in the beginning of world of warships but when cvs were introduced i don't think that really applies anymore and let me explain why the first thing you probably will think is well uh, you know aircraft carriers were in world war ii and beyond of course they are the most powerful naval vessel that a nation can field just look at America with their, I think it's 11 they have now, or even maybe more, I don't know. My point being that, of course, they are meant to be in a naval game, but I don't think they belong in Blitz for the main reason that in a naval game, let's say War Thunder, for example, you lose crew, which they act like health. But let me point out, in this game, we lose health points. So when I get shot by a Vermont, let's say in this Goliath game right here, I'm in full broadside. Well, I will take half of my HP. In real life, if that shell were to hit me, 12 shells indeed, of 450, what's it, 57 millimeter? Yeah, the, the, my ship would be gone. I would be devastated, completely nuked out of existence. And my crew would be scraping to get off the ship, or if they could save the ship, it wouldn't be combat effective. So, the problem becomes when CVs that trade planes for HP so CVs use their planes their weapons as their health so when a CV tries to attack you you have to use your AA to potentially shoot down these planes now at no point during this attack if the CV is <laughs> playing somewhat smart will you'll be able to see him and shoot back at the, the aircraft carrier no you are only shooting at his planes 
So, and when he strikes you with a dive bomber or two and maybe some torpedoes because you like that, you will have lost health, but the CV has lost nothing. So, that is why I think it's unfair. And let's say that if um, it was more like a realistic naval fighter, right? Let's say I could shoot, you know, shoot, choose to shoot with my AA and control my AA. That would mean that there would be some skill involved and I could actually damage something that is intended to hurt me. Now, granted, I can still not hit the, the aircraft carrier. That's how it's meant to be. You know, it projects power from far away using aircraft. But I can actually shoot down the planes using skill. Currently in this game, there's no skill involved at shooting down the planes. So when I'm engaging with the CV and he's trying to engage in combat with me, I have no control over how well my anti-aircraft does. So how can this be called the thinking man's action game when the CV I'm fighting doesn't trade any HP or anything that, you know, could decide the, the fate of my battle. There's nothing that happens to him. I take all the damage and I leave all of it up to a random AI algorithm that decides how many planes are shot down based on my AA damage values. It's, it's absurd to me and... I really just don't think they can call the Thinking Man's action game. I don't think they do anymore. Maybe I, maybe we stop them from calling them that. I don't know. I've preached this a lot on my, on my streams. But the thing is, 50% of CV you know, ships in the game, they take zero skill, meaning that they are mostly based off of dive bombers. Thinking Midway, Indomitable. I would even argue Manfred, but Manfred seems more fair, right? Because it doesn't set fires. Midway both strikes hard and sets fires, which is so unfun. So, with 50% of them, you can literally just sit in, you know, you can sit and watch a series, or you could probably even cook while you're playing, and just, oh, I'm going to drop some dive bombers. 30 seconds have passed, dropping dive bombers on the this guy, and then I'm going to, you know, quickly use my torps, just, you know, interact with it while I'm doing that, and then go back to cooking. <laughs> It's just, you know, you can't, you can't you, it's just, what are you going to do? When we're playing these ships, Goliath, for example, I'm like, I'm playing this clip. I have to engage the whole time. And I would love if I could actually use my AA also and engage even more and just completely nuke those planes because then it would be fair. Now, there's also other things. They do absurd damage. You know, I'm, I'm kind of yapping on here, but this is something that really has made me not like this game. And you guys probably know that. They do absurd damage, and they always seem to be at the top of the team if they're somewhat good. Now, I've played CV quite a bit, actually. Um, I have a, I have four CVs, uh, Tech Tree, and I've played them quite a bit. I understand how they work. I'm not very good at them because I rarely do them. I don't play them a lot. But it was easy for me to be at the top of the team mostly every time. It's pretty darn easy, and you got to admit that, CV players. It doesn't take a lot of brain power to actually manage that amount of squadrons and torpedoes but yeah i don't like cvs i wish there was a toggle option to be in a cv game or not we've talked about that too but wargaming don't don't want to do it and there's obvious reasons like the matchmaker would take too, too long cv players would get probably a little bit mad understandably <sighs> yeah it's i don't know really know what they want to do with with this but world of warships pc is introducing some changes to the, the cv class and i'm gonna link them in the description if you want to read there's also videos done uh, done about it but the, dish, the gist of it is you can't be focused by a cv anymore which is amazing and they're gonna do something with spotting now i'm, I'm only hoping that wargaming adopt these changes and implement them at blitz that would be amazing but we haven't really heard anything so i'm not gonna get my hopes up but those are my thoughts about cvs and matchmaking is just super unfun also this is my last little thing. Matchmaking is just unfun when you're playing, let's say, three guys. You're playing a battleship, cruiser, and DD. And then you come up against another platoon, which you highly likely will. That's just how matchmaking works. It's got to be fair. But they bring a CV, and in instantly you are just going to lose this battle most likely because the CV player you get is whoever, right? He just fills a spot. And it's just it just ru ruins quite a bit of, you know gameplay for me at least i can't speak for anybody but i wish matchmaking was you know able to let us toggle if we want to play with the cv or not so now i'm going to talk about the second section of this video and 
if you made it this far 30 minutes in guys i i really thank you for listening to me and if you're gonna hop off now because you you know you you just really here for the the game and stuff i will talk about my channel and up the updates i'm gonna do to this channel so um yeah thank you guys for watching this long and if you continue on i i really appreciate that so first of all i want to say thank you so much guys for especially ever since rule of the waves when i did my first rule of the wave stream i had just been monetized and currently you know i'm a student i don't make a lot of money and this has kind of just been a hobby project that i i never really thought i would make money on Trust me, I, di I never thought that I would become a YouTuber who made money on, on Blitz, but because I have so many awesome supporters who donate to me, become members, or just watch the streams and like and comment, it's been absolutely insane and, and amazing. And I've just found out, like, this is what I want to do, you know, if I can, if I have time to do it. And I there is still a passion to do YouTube, but probably just for other games. Now... I want to start off by saying that I will not stop making Blitz content. I will not stop streaming Blitz because what I love absolutely most about this game right now, the actually the only reason I'm really playing Blitz is because I love streaming it for you guys. We always get a pretty high number of people. It's actually, it's crazy. 50 people sometimes. And it's just so amazing having you guys there. We do some stupid shenanigans. You guys make me frustrated. But in a good way, I, you know, I, I love it because it, it's it's pretty humbling sometimes when you see some of the sides in yourself that you, you thought you could kind of control. Now, I'm not saying that I get emotional and stuff because it always ends up being super fun. But you guys have tested me. You have taught me things. I've had huge mistakes that I've made. And you guys have just been there through it. And I, I want to thank you guys for that. So I'm going to continue streaming Blitz. I'm going to continue producing videos when there's new ships and updates and stuff that, you know, hopefully improves the game. And, you know, that's still going to be there. I'm still going to do that, guys. So don't worry. But I will pivot my channel towards other games. And uh, some of you guys can maybe guess what they're going to be. Enlisted is the, the one I'm really thinking of. If you don't know what Enlisted is, it is a first-person World War II shooter where... You know, you fight on the legendary campaigns of World War II, Stalingrad, the battle for Moscow, Normandy, Tunisia, the battle for the Pacific, and they're going to make more campaigns. There's planes, there's tanks, and it's super fun, and I enjoy that. So I'm going to make videos on that, guides, and, you know, just funny gameplay montages with me and my friends. So if you are interested in that i would love to see you there but of course i know that people who subscribe for me for blitz you might not be interested and that's totally cool and if you hop off you know thank you for coming along it was awesome having you but i have to kind of you know do something else because i don't enjoy blitz right now and that's why i'm making this video i'm also playing war thunder mobile and potentially going to be playing the normal war thunder because i can't get it to work on my pc you know the mobile version so we'll see what happens, but my point being I'll do other games and just play what I love and what I find interesting and it's going to be kind of in the same subgenre of Blitz, you know, potentially a mobile game with vehicles, something action-packed, maybe historical, because that's what interests me and uh, that's what I'm going to probably do. So if you're still interested in joining me in doing this, I... Man, I, I can't wait to ha have you come along. I'm going to do some other streams, other games. And if you guys have seen Terry's video, it's kind of... It, I just realized that it, it kind of lines up with his um, video talking about him going full-time on YouTube. Now, that's not what I'm doing. I still, you know, have school and stuff. But him dedicating more of his time to doing YouTube. And you, he's always, you know done variety content and i i want to kind of do the same as him so i'm kinda, i guess i kind of got inspired by terry so thank you terry i don't know i don't think he's watching this but my guy you are a legend in blitz and he still continues to be so man pog champ terry that's all i can say and yeah i guess that is gonna be the end of this video this was a pretty long one i mean we only went four seconds over here in the second section but yeah thank you for watching this guys i really uh I'm sorry for not answering comments. I have just not really been, you know, interested in in the game of Blitz. So 
I've just been doing other things, but I will get around to answering all your comments. I, I like to do that. I like to hear everybody's voice. And this one specifically, I'm definitely going to listen to your comments or read your comments and try to get back as fast as possible. Because this is important, I feel like. It's important that we uh, open up and talk about what we think about this, the game and stuff. So that's it for now. My name has been Bubloon, aka Pamloon. I love Blitz and I love you guys. I will talk to you all in the next one. I am signing out. And a big round of applause for Team Bugnutty. Thank you guys. You are amazing. Yeah. See you guys.